Hello beautiful people, how's everybody doing and welcome to a new video on Massimo's Photography. When it comes to the video enthusiasts, Nikon has not really been that popular brand to go with. For example, some of the Panasonic or Sony camera models, they have been a lot more popular when it comes to capturing more serious video footage. Now the reasons why Nikon may not be that popular when it comes to video, I cannot confirm for certain, but maybe it has to do with the fact that Nikon cameras do not really output 10-bit footage. It may also have to do with the fact that Nikon cameras don't really have any legit internal image stabilization. And it may also have to do with the fact that some Nikon cameras do not even allow you to adjust the aperture in live video mode. With the Nikon D850, Nikon sounded very promising when it came to video production, but it still disappointed somewhat. And perhaps with the upcoming mirrorless camera, Nikon will head into the right direction for all the video enthusiasts out there. Now at least Nikon has been adding a flat picture profile to its cameras in the recent years. If you have no idea what a flat picture profile is good for, or why anybody would use such a muddy, unappealing looking picture profile, I have made a video on that, so make sure to check out the video description down below, or check out the last 20 seconds of this video, I will go ahead and link that video there so you can learn more about that. But even a flat picture picture profile is not really what enthusiasts look for. Enthusiasts like log picture profiles that do allow you to preserve more of that available dynamic range. So let's say you have a Nikon camera laying around but you do not have the money or the reasons to invest into a more serious video camera. Is there anything that you could do? The answer is sort of. I did come across a few websites like photographio.com which do provide some very interesting custom picture profiles like Cineflat. And I have tested and learned that by adding the Cineflat picture profile to my Nikon camera, I was able to preserve more of that available dynamic range, which will ultimately give me a little bit more flexibility when it comes to editing my footage later on. I will go ahead and leave a download link in the video description down below, but let me go ahead and show you guys how you can add this picture profile to your Nikon camera and take advantage of it. After you unzip the Nikon folder, make sure to copy the Nikon folder itself, even though there is another folder in there and then the actual profile is right here. So make sure to copy this Nikon folder onto a formatted empty SD card. All right, so after you have copied the Nikon folder onto your formatted SD card, insert your SD card into your Nikon camera, turn your camera on, click on menu, and then under your photo shooting menu, go under manage picture control. This is typically under set picture control. Once you go under here, you wanna go under load save, and then copy to camera. As you go right here, you will see that the profile from the SD card is now visible. All you now gotta do is hit OK, and then choose a place or a spot where you can save it to. And then once you access your camera, you will now be able to access this Photo 10 Cineflat picture profile. Here's some footage of the D850 with Nikon standard picture profile. As you can see, the piano gets a little bit too dark and we're losing a little bit of details in the highlights in the windows. Here's Nikon's flat picture profile with negative three contrast and negative three saturation on top. As you can see, the shadows and the highlights do open up much better and we are able to preserve more dynamic range, but this is as far as Nikon's flat picture profile goes. And here's some footage of the Cineflat picture profile. As you can see, it opened up things even further and we are able to preserve more dynamic range. Now, of course, we have to keep in mind that there is a little bit more noise visible in those shadow areas, but given that sharpening and noise reduction are very standard practices when it comes to video editing, it should not be a big deal. And that sums up today's video. Thank you very, very much for watching. And as always, please, please, please let me know if you guys have any questions. I'm very good about responding to each and every one of you guys in the comment section down below. And if you found this video to be helpful, why don't you make sure to smash that like button or subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for more content like this. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.